Hi. One of the viewers suggested a video on wet and dry sandpapering, and it's actually a very good suggestion. Good topic. Um, now, there's, there's a little bit of background to my answer, so you sort of need to get a little bit more information before the wet and dry sandpapering properly makes sense. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that there's three types of sanding. Sanding plastic, sanding uh, filler, some are better fillers, some are worse fillers, and sanding paint. With sanding plastic, I don't ever need to do wet sandpapering. With sanding filler, I almost never need to do wet sandpapering. Um, what is more likely is that I'll need to clean my sandpaper under some water. And with um, paint sanding, it is quite likely that I'm going to need to do wet sanding. And then, outside of modeling, if you, for instance, cleaning the paint off a piece of metal, great place to be wet sanding. That is perfect for wet sanding because you're doing a lot of action, a lot of paint is coming off. You can, you can do it fairly hard because the difference in hardness between paint and the metal means that you can quite easily get through the paint and down to the metal with a, uh, a fairly good grit sandpaper. But back into modeling now, so that's the types. Now I have to step back again. Where I previously might have been sanding quite a lot over the years, I've gradually come to reduce my use of filler to the minimum that I can. And mostly I'm successful, but sometimes I'm not. Like this. This is Seawolf Submarine. Now, there is a whole lot of filler there. And there is filler all the way down. I, some places I haven't even done yet. So, that is why this model just became stagnant for years now. There's so little to this model, apart from the whole. But, it's that sanding which has got me. And it's not wet sanding that I need to do. So... If this filler is properly dry and you're sanding it, you will clog your paper a little bit and you will need to clean it. But the drier the filler or the drier the surface and the less pressure you're putting on it, the less likely you are to um, clog your sandpaper. However, it will get clogged and then the question comes in, well, should, I've, should I have been wet sanding it? My answer to that is not necessarily, not with this plastic. I prefer to be sanding a bit and feeling it there. Underwater, everything's going to feel great. Um, and I, I just sit with a cloth and wipe the dust off and I dab the um, piece of sandpaper that I'm using off on the cloth. So, here's what I'm using. I'm cutting my sandpapers off into pieces like this, different grits. I'll often write on the back what it was. Um, so that I've got a choice of these things and they very, very perfectly sized to manipulate with your fingers very well. I've seen a lot of people use the the sticks and, and various things. I like to feel the surface through there so while I'm sanding this I am feeling what I'm doing. That still hasn't explained wet sanding. But it does explain that I'm avoiding wet sanding, or I'm avoiding sanding at all. Well, that's not quite a true statement either. I'm avoiding awful sanding, and I'm minimizing my sanding to um, very sparse use of filler, and only the required sanding on that afterwards, which means I'm not leathering on this stuff. I'm even... You know, I mean, it does sink and you need to put on a bit more, but I'd rather put on it, put on sparingly and fill slightly more later with my blade. Um, 
so so for instance with this model with all the sanding that's left yeah i'm gonna fill, um, i'm gonna clog my sandpaper a little bit but i'm not gonna go wet sanding paint right so now let's say you've done a car bonnet or something and it's painted and you want to wet sand that first point is if you're trying to remove the paint i wouldn't go wet sanding i'd be going with something that um lifts the paint layer like brake fluid or oven cleaner or I don't know all the methods that people use for that however if it's a minimal aspect and I was recently doing this in December with my restoration of a couple of those 112 motorbikes which I'm still busy on but there was one particular one where I was first trying to see if I could um, save a fairing now fairings got all sorts of little nooks and crannies where you need to try and get um, paint out and I was doing wet sanding there uh, it was not successful in achieving a paint a part that could be used again but it was successful in what I did so for instance there we're talking about these specific uh, I don't know if the correct name is carborundum papers and um, the, gra the grades that I'm usu using is usually around the 1200, 600 uh, vicinity. You get 1000, you get 2000 as well. Nothing wrong with having the whole range. Cut yourself squares right on the back because uh, when you cut them in squares, not all of the squares will have the um, printed grading on them. Um, so yes, then I, I would be standing by the tap doing a little bit of sanding softly. Very little of the the wet sanding is hard sanding, so you know being successful or not successful at the wet sanding is often not the not not the fault of it being wet or not. It's just how how difficult is it to sand that part at all? Trying to get into the nooks and crannies. All water is doing is stopping your um, paper getting clogged at that point. It's just washing the surface clean, washing your paper. And your part clean so while my um, video is trying to suggest how to achieve wet sanding it's actually suggesting how to avoid the requirement for um, most most annoying sanding if you've if you've if you've reached the point where a huge amount of sanding was required you probably could have um, approached it differently in the first place now there is there is an exception to a time when wet sanding might actually be quite handy and that's when you've painted and everything and you've got a gloss layer on it and you now just want to do a very very light buffing you can use the 1200 or 2000 or whatever small piece and, and you'll notice that I use pieces of paper that are well worn and very easy to conform to the surface um, there's even occasions when I will now no, you get harder papers this one is obviously a much harder one but if you, uh, you take two of your papers and rub them together to reduce the grading to a degree so I mean for instance taking um, a 1200 two pieces of that even if they've been used a bit and uh, reducing the, the the sharpness of the particles on them and reduce that down even more but it, so one you know so this this might have been a thousand two hundred to start with but it's now probably about a two thousand I mean there's next to nothing that's great for water paper uh, water um, sanding so if you've got this part which has already got a gloss layer on it maybe even the varnish layer maybe even three varnish layers and you're really just getting a couple of little dots off in that softly under the water gently not putting pressure on any cur uh, on any of the the um, pointy bits because you will rub off on a pointy bit uh, faster than on a flat surface and you just you're just going over it and you can even use the back to do a bit of buffing um, so yeah that's that's sort of my answer on that um, so if you're struggling with wet sanding were you doing something different than what I've said were you using bigger pieces of sandpaper were you not achieving getting the sand uh, the, the paint off in recessed areas 
which is not really the wet sanding's uh, fault. It's just really difficult to get that out. And um, and and the correct solution to that is brake fluid or oven cleaner or that sort of thing. And if you're talking about really being able to sand a, a nasty area of filler, um, yep, okay, uh, you, you don't have to do it wet. Um, you can start with a coarser grade and um, gently get the, the worst parts of that off and then work down. Now you've always got to be careful with um, rough sandpaper and plastic because if you're also hitting plastic while you're sanding rather than for instance, uh, giving yourself a bit of curvature on that sandpaper so that you're able to touch only the parts of filler that you want to get. Um, you get. You're touching the plastic as well, and you are going to damage the plastic, which you don't want to do, in which case, not, not the rough grade, but one of the smoother grades. And um, yeah, so let me know if what I've covered now has not quite touched on the... Um, more experienced problems that you've had, the, 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 the problems that you've experienced. Um, and I'll see if I've, uh, if I've done that at all. I have used um, a couple of fillers which I'm not really happy with and I, I don't use them much anymore. The Tamiya one is my most common one. It does sink in. Um, don't sand it when it's only partially wet. Firstly, that will clog your paper. And secondly, you're taking off too much again off the model. Anyway, let me know. And if I can cover more on that, I will. Cheers.